reflection is when it bounces off of a surface or a medium. And a medium, I mean by the type of material that it's in. It can refract, meaning it when it goes into a new medium, it will change speeds and it will slow down or speed up and bend, change directions. It's not necessarily like a curve, like a bend, but at that boundary, it kind of instantaneously changes directions. And then there's diffraction is when uh, waves or light bend around objects. So right now we're looking at refraction. So hopefully you remember that when light or waves bend because they go to a new medium, um, they will bend a certain way. So I think the, the analogy in the video with the marching band, that's something I always do as an example. I usually say like, oh, they're walking into snow um, and that's causing them to slow down. But I do have another kind of little tool, your handy dandy um, pencil, which you can see I drew. So first off, light's only going to bend when it approaches a medium. So this is our, our boundary between air and water. Um, approaches that medium at an angle. So if it goes just straight through, it's not going to bend. I'm sorry. It's not going to bend. So the light will just go straight through. No issue. But for this one, and the remaining, it's approaching at an angle. So it's basically got an option. So if this is straight through, it's going to either bend down or it's going to bend up. So what we're going to do is the little saying that hopefully you saw is going to be either away from or towards the normal line. So if this is our normal line, and so if this is straight, so it's either going to go towards it or away from it. It's not going to go all the way this way. Um, so the little saying was when we go from fast to slow, we go towards a medium. So hopefully you guys came up with a cool acronym. Um, I'll take a look at them. They tend to stick uh, in your mind. Something that my physics teacher in high school taught us. And for some reason, this I always remember this guy. Um, is if we take our pencil, right? I, I apologize for the lack of production value here. But if we have our pencil perpendicular to the ray that we're looking at. So we're looking at this ray, right, that we've been, the second one in. And as this wave front, because remember, whether it's the front of a wave, front of a marching band line, or just uh, our light ray coming in, the bottom of our pencil, meaning the one that we write with, is going to enter our medium first, our water. So light travels faster in air than water. So the bottom of our pencil right here, sorry, I don't want to do that again, is going to be going slow while the top part is going to be going fast still. So what's going to happen to our pencil is it's going to start to bend this way, right? Because of those relative speeds of the top and bottom of the pencil. So that we turn towards our normal line, right? So that follows this rule, FST, fast to slow, right? This would be straight through. So it's going to bend towards our normal line. Now, right now, we don't really know exactly how much it's going to bend. So we're just going to show that it does bend towards it a little bit. And what some people have tended to do in the past is they draw that like straight light ray as a reference so they could see that it went down. And you're just going to do that for the, the remaining one. We know that they're all going to bend down. Um, what you want to do is draw in your normal lines. And this is straight up just qualitative, no numbers. We don't really care how much it's going to bend. Just know that it will bend. Simple as that. So let's take this guy down here. So now we're going to look at the opposite. What if the light source was in the water? So now we're going from... Slow to fast, oops, fast, and the light is going to bend away from the normal line. 
So the easy one, the light source is coming straight through. It's not going to bend at all because the relative speeds are the same on those wave fronts or the sides of that light. So then if we look here and we use our pencil kind of analogy way to do it. Um, let's turn this way. So you see now this is perpendicular. So as it's coming out, now we're at the border. So the top of the pencil where we write with is in our fast area. The bottom where the eraser is, is in the slow. So this side is gonna go fast, where this side is gonna still go slow, right? So it's gonna turn to the right or away from our normal line. There's a better function here. Um, so we again, we want to draw in our normal lines. Quick quiz, what does normal actually mean? That's right, Jenna. It means perpendicular to a surface. Okay, so this would be straight through, which is not going to happen. This would be towards the normal, and then it's FSA, so it's going to go away from the normal line. So this would be perfectly straight through, so we're definitely bending to the side. So we're going to make sure that we bend away each time. And I didn't really draw that that good, but... Oh, there we go. Something like that. When we get into some problems later on, next class, we'll get to see the, the values of how much we're going to bend when. So the same thing is going to happen with lenses. So lenses, whether you actually have lenses in your eyeball, so whether your lenses are perfectly shaped or the muscles that you know shape them are weak, this will determine whether you need glasses or contacts whether you are nearsighted versus farsighted. Um, contact lenses do the same thing. They correct these uh, different focal points. Lenses of glasses do the same as well. So <clears throat> here we have what's called a convex lens, right? It's fat in the middle, thin on the ends. The other one, this is called a concave lens. And if you remember learning that in middle school, it's like a cave, right? Caves inward. So that's our concave lens. So the easy part is that when the light goes straight through the middle in both cases, it doesn't bend at all, right? Because it's not going to approach the boundary of the lens at an angle. So that would go in. So if we bring our pencil back, Let's, let's go top and bottom. Sorry, that annoyed me. So for our top ray, as we're approaching, the bottom part is in our lens, so that's going to go slow because lenses are typically made of glass, and it tells us glass blocks. The top is still going to go fast. So since the top is going fast, it's going to bend downward. So... As it goes in, let's move our thing. So we don't have to necessarily trace it as it bounces or bends it within and out. We just know this type of lens is going to bring it down. I don't like that. So this is going to be a lens that brings it straight down here. And it's going to be the same thing at the bottom of the lens. And what is that doing to all of the light? It begins with the F. And us. It's not fuss. Focus. So these types of lenses in number three, convex lenses, are uh, focusing the light, concentrating it, converging the light. That's going to come back later. With the other light or other lens, 
You can see it's going to do the opposite. As the light wave or wave front approaches our pencil, the top part of our pencil right here, sorry, right here, slows down while the bottom is still going fast. So if the bottom slows down and the bottom is still going fast, if the top, I'm sorry, if the top goes slow and the bottom is going fast, it's going to turn upward. So let's get this guy out of the way. So that light is going to come in and bend upward. Same thing down the bottom. I don't like that that's a curve. And that's known as a diverging lens. And that's where we're going to leave it for today. Um, make sure you have completed, I believe there's three things, the quiz, the Ed Puzzle video, and the follow along with this part of the packet. Make sure you're uploading uh, your work from this part of the packet, just so I know that you're comprehending and you're at least to that step for us to move on next time. So if you are taking AP exams, good luck. Um, if not, try and get ahead in your classes and enjoy nice weather if we get some.